I'm Dave Ingebretson, and Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. And as usual, we have a varied selection of flies for you tonight. We're going to start out with the classic blue dun dry fly. Blue wing olive. Uh, blue winged olive, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's two flies that I'm not familiar with, Leroy. One of them is a steelhead fly called the buck's buck, bug. Buck bug. And another is a nymph called the black knight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm interested in the show. I hope All everybody right. else will be too. I want to see what we're going to well, do. We'll start off with the blue wing olive. I'll use an dot olive fly tying thread. For the wing and tail material, I'm taking it off of a, of a neck. I'll pull a, f a feather off of this spade side to take for the, the wing and the tailing material. The body will be dubbed with this br uh, olive brown type dubbing material. It is Antron. And then the wing will be the standard blue, uh, blue done all, uh, saddle hackle. I have a size 12 dry fly hook. I'll mash the barb on it. and get it in the vise. You know, they say the, the, this particular pattern, the largest fly or hook size they call for is a size 12. Hmm. I'm sure I've seen blue wing olives out there flying around that are considerably larger than a 12. It but could be, and of course, if you're we'll fishing in the with. east, uh, that or could a lot be. of places they go down to 18s or maybe that even could smaller. Be. I've never seen them that small. Uh. Now, what I have is a couple of, of uh, blue dun feathers off of the, the cape. And I'm putting them shiny side to shiny side to make the convex with the wings natural curve out. I'll stick it up here and measure it. I want it about the length of the shank of the hook. And I always tie the wing on first. That gives me a chance to get the placement of that wing correct. I want it about a third of the way back. I always tie mine on first. Okay. I always have. That's just the way I learned to tie. Then I'm going to stand those wings up and let some of those fibers fall forward. And I'm just going to bind those wings down and clip those fibers off. And then I'll let the wings stand back up. And then I'm going to figure eight between them just to keep that division between the two and get them stood up nice. Now, when you wrap the hackle around that front and rear, that's also going to help that, that hackle stand oh, yeah. upright. Then I'm going to go to the rear. Now here, if you wanted, I could put a little drop of that rubber base glue on it. I'll go ahead and just keep going without it. I'm going to pull just a little bit of tailing material off of both sides of this feather. And I, again, I want this to be about the length of the shank of the hook. So this time yeah. I'll come in and touch up front, get the measurement to the rear. Now it doesn't hurt if that tail's a little longer, no, but you it don't doesn't. want it shorter. Because, because it, it won't sit up right, on the water. It won't sit right. It'll have a tendency to stand on its nose. Mm -hmm. I'll get all that bound down. You know, I think the reason this comes in such a variety of sizes is because it, it, it's a generic pattern and it really matches a lot of different mm -hmm. blue winged mm -hmm. olive type flies. Mm -hmm. uh, the little betas and such get pretty small. And so, uh, depending on where you're fishing and what size it, the f insects are, that will determine what size you tie it. And you know, I have seen, I have seen the blue wing olive hatching about the same time as the March browns, almost both uh -huh. of them together. Yeah. And you never know which fly to use, and uh -huh. I'm not sure which one the fish are keying on. Now I'll get my little dubbing tool here, my little loop tool. I'm going to fold oh, that you're over. You're going to make a loop. I'm going to make a loop out of it. Get all that bound down, and then I'm going to tie. I'm going to tie just a half hitch here so I know it's going to stay in place. And then I'm going to use my rotary after I spin this, get it tightened up a little. I'm curious that you're using a uh, dubbing loop on just a straight dub body. Well, it, that way I can it use this. Fine. Oh, yeah. Now I've captured just a little bit there on the uh, point of the hook, but that won't hurt a thing. Now I could taper that, I could leave it longer, I could, I mean, uh, narrow, mm -hmm. I could use it just flat like it is. Now, tell us again, this is a blended olive dubbing. Uh, olive and brown olive dubbing and brown. together. Yeah, they call it olive brown. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a little bit more toward the olive side, I mean well, the brown you, side. What a unique thing olive. to call something that's a mixture of olive and brown. Well, yeah, okay. How is that unusual? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now here comes the, the uh, regular hackle. I'm going to wrap in front of those wings once more. 
And you see, I've left myself quite a little bit of room yeah. here for a hackle, but yet a lot of the water you fish with this can be heavy, at least where, where I have fished it here before in the sure. West. Well, and the main thing, too, is you've left enough room to get a nice head yes. on the fly. You're yes. not crowding things. And the other thing is if you crowd the eye, the fly won't ride no. properly. It'll dump over on its head. You can't get the good coat uh, of head so, cement so on. So you really need to tie it in these proportions. Get that bound off. Clip that hackle off. Build a little head. Close that eye up. Do you know why we build that head? Most hook eyes, as they come around, there's a little oh, gap. A little in gap, it. sure. To fill so that you gap. close that yeah. gap up. That way, the leader can't get down in there well, and have a tendency and it just, to it cut. finishes off the fly. Oh so yes, well. it does. And in fact, when I used to tie a lot with really fine thread, I would dub the head. Oh really? To match the body, oh, and sure. that was pretty classy. Sure, sure could. There's a little blue wing, Ollie. Very nice. I'll get a drop of head cement on it. I see I've got one little fiber still sticking out there. I don't know why it can't get him to clip off. Just put a little drop here on top. I'll roll the hook over. A little drop underneath. And that's a pretty good looking little blue wing ollie. Well, it sure is. It's got a blue dun hackle fibers for the tail. It's got the olive brown dubbing for the body. It's got a blue dun hackle tip for the wing and blue dun saddle for the hackle. Now this buck bug steelhead fly is a new one to me. Mm -hmm. You tell me it's a variation on the old bomber? Just take off of the bomber without wings on it. Uh -huh. Came out of Nova Scotia, someplace over there that they use for Atlantic salmon and whatnot. Uh -huh. I've also given some of these flies to people in Seattle. They tell me that they just slaughter the sea run cutthroat. Sea run cuts. But whatever. All right, pretty simple fly if you like to spin hair that is. I'm going to use a 6 aught black tying thread. The tail material will be this multicolor crystal flash, and you could use just regular pearl or you could use black. I just happen to like this multicolor. The body will be spun black deer hair, and then we'll have a black saddle hackle running through it. This particular fly will have no wing to it. Now, I already have a standard steelhead dry fly hook in the vise. I have pinched the barb on it. This is a size six, and I'm going to go ahead and dress the hook shank, just like we always do. Run I suppose that could be tied in a variety of sizes, and if you oh, really sure wanted it, it for sea run cuts, you'd probably tie it a little smaller. Uh, I tied them sixes for the ones that went over really? there. I don't know. You, yeah, you could tie them whatever. And I'll just take a few strands of this, and I don't want a, a, a great deal of this stuff in there. I probably got five or six strands is all I have. Clip them off even. Tie them down. Well, it probably bears repeating, but a lot of people get a little uh, overexcited about too much crystal <laughs> flash. They put a yeah, lot of crystal well. flash in. and That's my personal it, preference. Yeah, I don't like that much. It's a case where a, a little bit is better. You're just yes. trying for a little sparkle. Now what I'm going to do is just a little bit of this black deer here. I'm just going to trim. i put your rib in. Oh yeah, I guess I better put that rib in first, hadn't I? My hackle. You're all right, Dave. You keep me straight with that once well, in a while. I just all right, want to I'll keep bind that down. Now I'll take a piece of deer here. That be all right with you now? Sure. Now's okay. a good time. All right. I'll clip that hair off of there, and I do not have a real large clump. I'm going to get rid of the tips, and the butts are also straight. I'm going to take a cinch down in the middle. I'm going to hang on to this hackle so it doesn't rotate around and then just drive that hair right on around the hook. Now I'm going to go forward just a little ways, stand all that up, get my thread in front. Well, do you try to compact it, push it back? I will, yeah. I'm just going to use my fingers. There's uh -huh. tools you could get with it, but uh, as much hair is going to be on this, I'm not sure how all necessary it is. You kind of wait a while to do yes. that. Yes. Also, uh, Keep in mind that the shorter you clip this hair, the easier it is to spin around the hook. Yep. You don't have as much to chase around it. Now I'm also going back into that first section that I just put on, and I'll come back into that second section again. Do you ever uh, coat the hook with your rubber base? I cement could, to yeah, I it do. So a lot of times I don't with the black because black has a tendency to pick up that shiny 
Mm -hmm. Blue. Now the other, their natural hair does not, but the black will have a tendency to do that. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to just spin another one. I probably will have to put at least one more on, maybe two after this one. You know, the other thing I've found is if you get that uh, rubber-based cement up close to the head, it's not compatible with the no. head cement. No, it's and not. And you get a white, awful-looking head. Yes. Now I'll pack that together as best I can. Take a few wraps. Now you could also half hitch in between each one of those steps yeah, if you I wanted. Suppose you I never do that. No, I don't either. I just don't take time to, but. Well, I'm not sure there's a need to. One more clump I might get by with. I really like the idea that you're clipping the bundle short. Yes. And it, it makes a neater thing to start with. And for goodness sakes, if you're doing bass bugs, it's practically already trimmed there. Pretty close. All right. I don't think I'm going to try to slide another one in there. Get everything out of the way. This one I probably should have left the tips on. It would have been a little easier to hang on to. I'll just close that up, get my whip tool on it, and put a quick whip on it. And I'm not through with it yet because I got to get into it now and trim it all off. I'm going to take it out of the vise. First thing I'm going to do is trim that belly flat. And if you're doing a lot of these, take a razor blade and trim that belly flat. It'll make them go a little quicker for you. But you can see that's nice and flat now. Everything's gone. You need that for that hook gap mm -hmm. to hook the fish. Now I'm going to just turn it around and start clipping that hair off. I want it tied in a, in a cigar shape, if you will or I want it clipped in a cigar shape. That little bit of taper to it. Right now I'm just trying to protect that hackle and that tail material. As soon as I get around that, it'll, it'll trim out a whole lot quicker. And this is basically gonna be a waking fly mm -hmm. or a, even a skating fly if it's yeah. dressed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it'll be up in the surface film, and of course that's why you got all that deer hair. The only difference between this and a bomber is the tail and there is no white wing, mm -hmm. but it will leave a wake going through the water. And that yeah. black, many times during a, a, a dark day, it will really show that fly off yeah. as it goes across. People don't often think about that, but on a dark day or with a wet fly in dark water, you want a dark fly. Dark fly. Because the light fly, for the color, it depends on sunlight. Mm -hmm. And when there's no sunlight, the color doesn't show up. No. And, uh, in dark water or dark sky, you want something that's going to be opaque. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because so, as you're looking at the fish is looking up oh, toward yeah. that, it makes quite a difference. Yeah. So uh, now there I'm a getting dark day, a dark fly, a bright day, bright day, fly. bright fly. Now there I'm getting my taper down pretty well. I want to take just a little bit more off the front here. I'll just run I around. I have an this. awful time. I never know when to quit trimming. Oh, <laughs> everybody is that way. I mean, I probably could have stopped already. Uh, but I just, oh, a little bit more will look better, and yeah. then a little bit more well, that, will look better. That's looking good. Okay. So you leave the front fairly square. You don't Yeah, round I, it I down. rounded it off a little. A little bit. Now I'll get my thread back on it. And I can see a couple now that I got it back in the vise. I'm going to need to trim off. And then all I'm going to do is wrap that hackle forward. Uh -huh. I'll take one complete wrap here in the rear and then just come forward with it. Four or five wraps, that's all you're going to need on the fly. Back to the front. Tie it down. Clip it off. Well, if a person enjoys doing hair work, it's really a simple fly. It is very simple fly. Uh, you don't have to fight that wing and tail on there like you do with a bomber. Yeah. It, uh, and it, Bomber's it's, cute with that curled wing coming oh, up in the front, is. sticking yes, out over is. the eye, but, and of course Very helps to so. see it. Uh, at least it does me. I'll clip just a couple more of these. I got some stragglers here in the back. But that's a buck bug. Buck bug. It, now, uh, how would you fish that? You're a steelhead fisherman. Well, how would you fish it? Quarter down and uh, just let it swing the current, it swing. skate it across. Uh -huh. uh, the fly will definitely create a commotion as it goes across the water. Uh -huh. uh, oh, I'm sure. It really will. You ever fish it like grease line style? You, yes, 
Yes, you can you can dress this fly real heavy, or you can leave it fairly well uh, natural. If you leave it natural, it's going to go under the surface slightly. Yeah. But you'll probably still see that bulge of water uh -huh. as it swings sure across. Yeah. Well, tell us again what was in it. There's a buck bug. It has the tail of the crystal flash, spun hair body, and black hackle. Good looking fly. Now the Black Knight Nymph is an all-purpose generic nymph that can be tied in a variety of sizes, fished singly or as a dropper. And, and represents lots of represents things. Represents lots, of, lots things. of things. Now this is a fly that uh, Patty Madsen came up mm -hmm. with, I think. She's mm -hmm. a well-known angler in the FFF and she does pretty much nothing but mm -hmm. fish year-round <laughs> in <laughs> Montana and New I Zealand. Think. and. Uh, it looks in fact, like that's where this fly came from, was in New, New Zealand. New Zealand? Yes. Well, it, it looks like a good pattern. Uh, tell us about it. Simple pattern to tie. I'll use a 6 aught black tying thread. This will also become the body. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be weighted with a, this is a uh, non-lead sinking wire. I, it could be made from tungsten. I don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. The head will be a peacock hurl, and the tail will be black moose hair. Now I have a size 14 hook. I'm going to go ahead and pinch the barb. But you can tie this. They tie them all oh, 18s. 18s. And, uh, in fact, in the magazine article, the first fish he caught on it was a nine-pound brown on a size 18. <laughs> and when you get that small, you'd probably use a little longer shanked hook. Um, didn't say that. Couldn't I tell mean, you that. I mean, if you're going to get lead sure. wire on there and all that. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and dress this hook shank with the thread. And then I'm going to put the lead wire on. Now I'm I'm really pleased to see companies making an effort to get non-lead. Lead free. We call it lead wire, but to get a lead free yeah. wire, uh, better for the environment. And there are places where you are restricted from using lead yes. wire. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap up toward the eye. And I'm going to get almost there. And then I'm going to come back over it for the thorax area. Build it up. Boy, that's going to be a heavy thing. Oh, it will. It will. That'll get down there, which is good. That's where you want to be. Then we'll clip this off. And I'm going to go ahead and coat this with this rubber base glue. Now, you know, lots of times I've been drifting pheasant tails or some small nymphs uh, close to the surface when the naturals mm -hmm. are coming mm -hmm. down. This would be a good fly unweighted, too. Oh, it could well be. Yeah, to just yes. drift up in the top few inches yes. when, uh, when the drift is on there. Now, I've got that started. I'm going to come back here to the back now and tie on just a very few strands of moose body. You know, I find with nymph fishing, many, many people aren't successful because they're not getting deep enough mm -hmm. or they're, they're mm -hmm. in the wrong part of the water column. Mm -hmm. Most people fish in the middle of the water column because that's the easiest place to fish. But generally when they're feeding on nymphs, the fish are either at the bottom or, or they're right taking under the them surface. under their surface fill. That's right. uh, occasionally, of course, during a hatch, they'll be coming up through mm -hmm. the middle layers. Yeah. But the place you generally want to concentrate your nymph fishing is either right down on the bottom or in the top two, three, four that's inches right. of water. Now I'm just going to keep wrapping uh, this six aught tying thread. And here, even on Just the small flies, the six aught goes faster. It does. You yeah. could tie this with an eight aught. A three aught would do it even that much quicker. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I'm going to turn this over just to make sure I'm getting it all covered. From one side, it looks like it might be okay, and then you turn it over, yeah. and here it is oh, almost yeah. Find a little gap. nothing on it. And it, believe me, it's going to take a lot of wraps. Yeah. But I think fishing this fly as a dropper, and when we get through, Dave, I'll tell you how I fish a dropper maybe a little different or how Yeah, I well, that's interesting because uh, there are a lot on. of ways to fish a oh, dropper. lots. And uh, the way you were mentioning a little while ago, uh, I hadn't heard of before. Now, she did not fish this as a dropper all the time. She uh -huh. does not. She fishes it as a single fly. Oh, yeah. No, I can see that. Now. Basically, it's all covered. There might be a few in there, but not enough to make any difference. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take just a couple of strands of this peacock curl. Now, would you normally uh, cover that with head cement? I would. 
I won't because yeah. or head cement or the rubber glue, either one. Yeah. I'll go ahead and tie this peacock curl in. When I have a thread body like that, I I like to. I'll coat. Yeah. yeah. If I were home with it to let it dry a while, I definitely would. And then just put a, a small peacock head on the front. Peacock, in my opinion, is probably one of the best materials, oh, all yeah. round materials, yeah. you could ever now, use. I noticed that time. I, I didn't notice. Did you wrap it around? The I thread? wrapped it around yeah. the thread just yeah. to form a little peacock rope. Yeah. Well, that's much more secure that way, and yes. it won't it won't come loose. Now I'll build a little whip finish on the front, and that's and the I whole think, fly. And that's the whole fly. Now I can go back now, and take my head cement, yeah. and coat that body, and not get it down into the peacock. I yeah. think. Well, it definitely uh, firms up the body oh, and, and keeps the rib bond there good, and it it. With some materials, it, may, it intensifies the mm -hmm. depth and gives you a little shine. And, mm -hmm. uh, I do it all the time, and especially helpful, too, when you got lead under there. Yes. Now, there's a black knife. That's a good-looking fly. Ooh, about spill my head cement. Now, when I first saw this fly, when I first read about it, the first thing that came to my mind is a dropper fly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I was showing this trick, oh, several years ago. And as a, a skeptic, total skeptic of it, I didn't believe it would work. The guy handed me, my friend handed me his rod and reel, mm -hmm. of which he had it set this way. It does work. What he has done is taken a large dry fly, you could take a stimulator, an exciter, any type of a large dry fly. Do not tie that on the leader. Just run it up the leader. It's run free. the leader through the run eye. Run the leader through the eye. That fly is now floating free. Now tie on a tippet section with your blood knot, your surgeon's knot, whatever you want. Now that knot will not let that dry fly come back through that knot. The knot won't pass mm -hmm. through it. Tie this dropper on the bottom side of that knot. On the end of the leader. On the end of the leader. Now that fish can take either the dry or the dropper. Most of the mm -hmm. time, I think the dry attracts. They'll take the droppers mm -hmm. that comes by. How long a uh, dropper do you put on there? Oh, I would probably not use more than about 18 to 20 That's, inches. I was just going to say 18 uh, inches or yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, that would be about the now, right, of course, right a, size. A lot of the Montana guides, uh, what they'll do is they'll tie on the dry fly, and then they'll try to the, tie the dropper onto the, Around the bend, of, bend the of the hook. Right. right. And I always wonder about that, if it lets the uh, dry fly be as free as it should. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. That's the way I had always no. done it until I saw this particular way. And yeah. I have not gone back to the other way. And, of course, the other way to put on it is to put your top fly mm -hmm. out on a very short, stiff. stiff. Yes. So it but doesn't then, tangle around. To me, but, it still has yeah. a tendency to tangle. Yeah. But I will even use that dropper method even in lakes with, oh, yeah. with two larger flies. Well, there's well, the Black Knight. Yeah, and tell us what you use. Tied with moose body hair for the tail. Has nothing but a thread, uh, black thread body, peacock curl head, and the fly is weighted. Mm -hmm. Well, this time we tied a blue winged olive dry fly. We tied, tied a buck, buck bug steelhead, steelhead fly, fly, and a great little nymph, the, the black, uh, Knight. black Knight. So we've given you quite a few things to, uh, to try, regardless of where you live. We really appreciate you watching the show, and uh, we hope you have a good week of fly tying, and uh, we'll see you in another week. Thank you. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the western and eastern United States. For basic western and eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.